Hello and welcome back everybody. I'm 7077 here on Pharaoh, a new era. We're gonna go ahead today and take a look at the newly released mission editor. That's right, we can go ahead and finally create our own custom missions, which we're gonna take a look at. I'm just gonna do a brief overview. I'm gonna go through all the settings. I'm gonna show you how to set up some events and set up your map and stuff like that. So you can really take that and run with it. Create some awesome maps. Now, first of all, I do recommend that you start with either enormous, very large or large. Um, average is probably about the smallest I'd ever go. Tiny or small is just really small. So if you ever wonder, go back to a campaign mission that you really liked and look at the size of it. So we're going to go ahead and do select very large. Loads up pretty quick. All right. We are presented here with this big old blank map. You can see these ridges along the side. Now, first of all, to move around, you want to hold down your middle mouse button and move around. You can um, zoom in with your mouse button as well. There we go. Now, I do want to say that these little ridges down here are only for you to see. Your players will not see them. It cuts off. It does about a half inch, kind of uh, about eh, probably about 20, eh, about 20 millimeters in. So about here, roughly, um, based on my screen size is where you're going to see it. Now, looking at our uh, GUI here, we have fishing points, killer points, map, prey, entry, exit and river in, river out. We have all of our terrain settings here. We're going to skip all of this and go directly into the settings because honestly this is harder than any of this we're going to get into actually building a map after this now this is where we'll name it we're going to go ahead and just name this wolf test why not and a village is tested right, we're going to capitalize that because we're proper here tested all right so climate climate determines uh how far your floodplain will go kind of it also determines your uh, killer types and also um, your prey types, whether it's ostriches and arid, which we can see here, ostriches are arid, normal will be antelope and humid will be birds. So we'll just go ahead and stick with a normal climate. Um, if you're doing like oasis, you'd be arid to normal, usually arid. If you're doing something with like uh, the Nile River, you want to go normal to humid. Our flood quality, um, I usually just leave it on good, especially if you're going to have Osiris in there. If you don't want people to really be able to farm and you want to have to import food, maybe you'll go lower. Uh, it just depends on the difficulty level and what you're trying to accomplish. I always do recommend whenever you're setting out to do one of these that you have an end goal uh, in mind. So flooding starts in September. That's the normal default. You can change it. Uh, rescue gift this is how much money you'll get when you run out of money of course now this is determined as well on your difficulty so i'm on hard so i won't get the full 2500 it'll be like 900 or something now the enemy that you fight uh, we'll go over this at the end of the video uh, there is a percentage of what they'll be for land or infantry and archer so like i think the nubians and the libyans are somewhere around there maybe the kushites i forget but it's like 70 percent infantry 30 percent archer etc so it's kind of what you counter them with stuff like that your initial rank is your salary it doesn't really matter too much but eh, i would go with no mark why not now your killer types you can choose between lion or crocodile for normal climate i usually play with these off because until i can control my army and kill them i'm gonna leave it off you've watched my let's play series now flooding lasts for three months now this is obviously four months is you have four months of no farming so that's longer your food has to stretch three months of no farming is kind of your median and two months is quickly and it's back to it now your starting year mind you this does go in negative so It'll be like 5,000, 4,999, 4,998. So, we'll, you know what? We'll start it with a measly negative 900. How about that? Initial funds is how much you start with. Kingdom wages is how much the wages are. Of course, you have to pay your people. Higher is harder because you're constantly bleeding more money. And lower is easier because you don't have to spend so much. And then if you accrue debt, how much of a percent you're charged every year. Now, starting down here, this is where people get lost at. Kingdom Builder is a big one. So the first thing we want to do is we want to select our city. So I, re I rather like Minak Khufu. So we're going to go ahead and say Minak Khufu. We're going to say Enable City, this one up here at the top. And then we're going to go down to City Status, and we're going to change it to My City. Okay, so that will be our city. And you can change this as well. You know, let's, let's say we are, there we are, we're like that. Now, next, I recommend you choose Pharaoh's city. So we want Pharaoh to say he's going to be in Henan Nessu. Why not? And then we're going to say a table and we're going to say Pharaoh's city. Now, I want to be able to trade with Pharaoh. So and I want it to be a sea route and we're going to hit 
get rid of that there. No root. So you see how that's highlighted? We want to get rid of that. So we'll be able to trade with him. It's kind of silly as a default, considering it lets you do both of these. It should, in my opinion, be all or none. Uh, I wish it fixed that, but make sure you uncheck that and you, you check one of their trademarks. Now we need to select some cities to trade with. Uh, we'll do the Farafra Oasis over here. We're going to go ahead and enable that as well. It's an Egyptian city. And we're going to say land trade route. All right, and let's pick yeah, one more. How about that? Uh, we'll do Salty over here. Enable it. And it's going to be an Egyptian city with a trade route of water. Well, we'll do, how about Sawu? And we're going to say this is just a foreign city. And we're not going to be able to trade with Sawu. All right. So we'll have to come back to this and I'll, once we get through it. And we'll have to take a look at the trading. But if you ever wonder, you can click active and you can see your cities here. This is what your uh, map will look like to your players. All right. Next up is win conditions. If you just want to build and have fun, uh, check sandbox mode. But if not, you have to actually build it out. And remember that whatever you put in here for your win conditions, your players have to be able to actually achieve that. So if you want, that means you need to have uh, buildings checked for culture. You need to have a certain amount of foods if they require two or more foods. You need to have gods if they require two more two or more gods, um, et cetera, et cetera. So remember that this must be actually achievable. And the same goes for monuments as well. If you wanted them to build a massive pyramid, but they can't get plain stone or limestone, period, there's no way they can win the mission. OK, so and it won't really stop you, I don't believe. So let's say we're going to go with something modest. Say we want a population of 2,500 and we want... Uh, we'll just say five modest apartments. Why not? Uh, kingdom rating of. Now, mind you, if you do set kingdom ratings in there, if you want them to be high, your players, if you do not give them events to where they can increase their kingdom rating, which we're going to get in events in a middle bit. If you do not give them events, they will have to just spam, spam, excuse me, send gift to Pharaoh. And that has a cooldown. It's every year, basically. Um, cause if you do it more than once in a year, you get like basically nothing. So I, I if you don't want it to actually have to, uh, do certain things, you can just leave that blank culture rating. Once again, this must be achievable, which is tied to housing level, um, entertainment, food, and temple. So remember that. And pros I would say to design a really good map, you have to have a very firm grasp of the game and what it takes to get there. And of course, prosperity will want to make money, which means you need to be able to import or export. And your city has to earn money. So we'll just say a prosperity of we'll do something modest of 20. This is a pretty easy mission. And I want my people to build a small obelisk. So you have to have a population of 2,500, five modest apartments, culture rating of 25, prosperity rating of 20, and complete a small obelisk. Not too bad. And we don't have any barrier goods because it's just an obelisk. All right, moving on to the next part. We have audio settings here. So available music, this is the music that will play. And then population-based music is once you're, of course, you've reached a certain amount of population, a different music will play. Um, so you can add something in there. Now, I'm not going to hit play on any of that. You could go through them and check. Um, I don't want it to play for the tutorial. Oops, let's go back. We'll just add. Why not? We'll add that. Okay, next up is available buildings. This is very much overwhelming. And if you mess something up here, you'll know when you play it, you'll know very quickly. So I recommend actually that to start with, you actually go to the bottom. And the reason being is because enabling some of these things will enable things at the top versus having to do a lot of clicking. So if we enable work camp over here, good. Things like road, road enable bazaars. I'm not going to go through all of these because um, it just takes too much time. You know what you should enable. So, but here we go. You see enabling the library enables the following goods papyrus. That doesn't mean that they can get papyrus. It means that papyrus is an available good, whether through imports or crafting. But you actually have to set that import as well. It's things like bridges, granary, docks. If you want, you, we're doing water trading, so we need a dock, scribal school, tax collectors. That will enable the village palace. See, even like firehouses are uh, disabled, mortuary. So you want to go through all your basic services and make sure that they're enabled definitely. Apothecary, apothecary, physicians, stuff like that, wells, water. This is why I said start at the bottom. Dentist. Okay, so we're going to go up. Let's take a look up here. So say we want jewelers to be enabled. That's going to enable the goods of gems, whether through import or export. 
and we can actually do it. So, but now we can build a jeweler, but if we build the jeweler, we want to go ahead and be able to have a gemstone mine. So we're going to go up here to gemstone mine and do that. Whether, unless you want people to have to import it, you get where this is going. Now I want my people to be able to mine granite and not have to import it. So I'm going to go ahead and say granite is available. They can mine it. Same with plain stone for towers. It's going to enable that. Now, remember, I did say we have to build that thing, so we might need something like the stonemasons to carve it or the carpenters guilds for um, scaffolding. So we need to make sure we can get wood. If we were doing any type of military, we wanted to make sure we have whether importing weapons or making weapons here, whether we can mine copper. So let's say weaponsmith will be enabled. I want um, the infantry. It's going to enable the recruiter. We want archers, and that's going to be good. And then we want the academy. We're not going to have chariots. We're not going to have any of the other type of military stuff. We can do towers as well. Work camp. Now, now for food, um, this is also more important. And then entertainment. So for food, we're going to go ahead and say fishing wharf. Why not? That's going to enable the shipwright. Uh, hunting lodges. Now, remember, if you put these in your map, you want to be able to use them. Water lifts, etc. And now let's pick a couple farms. Uh, let's do chickpea farms or figs. I'm sorry. Chickpeas. Good, good. Flax. Why not? You get the point. Now, entertainment. I usually start with the bigger ones like pavilions. And that'll enable juggle school, conservatory, or dance. But we can also do bandstands and booths to allow them to make those if people want to. Plazas. You probably want to go and enable all the statues. Gardens. You know. And then you choose one of these palaces. So we'll just go with uh, the largest palace. Why not? City palace, and we'll go with the largest mansion. It costs more money, but you know how that goes. Roadblocks, etc. There we go. Now, this is not correct. You want to enable a lot more than this, but I'm not going to waste the time on it. All right, moving on to the next one. We did set available buildings. Now we have events. This, I think, is the part where people get messed up on. Now, you want to think of events as if and an or statements okay and that's i'll explain that here in a second if you've done any type of programming or anything like that you'll be more familiar so let's start at the top we're going to have a request there's troop requests there's invasions which is your military water trade problems six months of no water trade land trade is six months of no land trade wages increase decrease contaminated water clay pit etc we're going to build a couple of these that way to make them um uh more intuitive so the request here is going to be because of a famine. And we are going to say it is a gift from a city. And we are going to say the Farofaro Oasis. Okay. I know that's not how you say it, but that's how I like to say it. Now the frequency. There's recurrent, once, and triggered. Okay. So I want this to be a one-time event. And then year, we're going to leave at zero. And then months. So this will start the very first time that this happens. OK, the year category up here means that it has a. Chance that it will happen within that year time. OK, and then until is the amount of times it'll happen until it hits zero. And then the time limit is how long you have to explain to the request. Now, I'm going to do another event later and we'll go into these here more. So let's say or since we're testing, we're going to say February. And we want to have a three month time limit. So we start in January, the very next month in February, they're going to ask for whatever we say. Now we can select up the three goods and that is the game will random number generate between one of these three goods to select. We'll just go ahead and do one. We'll say chickpeas. And now remember that items like chickpeas, um, Debbins, well, not Debbins, chickpeas, uh, figs, uh, beer, things like that come in groups of 100. Now, things like stone, play stone, uh, granite come in objects of one. So this is your minimum amount and a maximum amount. If you want it to be the same, you just set them out the same. So say we want them to select between 200 to 500 chickpeas, okay? Not 200 like that because these are going to be units of. Now, remember, a unit is 100. So if we added two more zeros, that'd be 20,000 chickpeas. Don't do that. It's two. That would be between 200 chickpeas and 500. Now, if this was things like debons, it would be an exact value, 2,580 debons, which is the money, of course. Or if it was plain stone, it would request two plain stone to five plain stone. 
Remember, a storage yard is 3,200 or 32 units. And if we had selected this, so now it would be chickpeas or figs. It'll be one of those, and then it'll be between these two value, volumes here, 200 to 500. Now we see you have call another event down here, and this is kind of your if and or statements. We don't have any other events, so there's nothing we can select here. So we're going to move on and do another event so we can work on that. Now we're going to do a couple events here. We're going to say, I want what happens if we succeed. If we pass our thing, our request, I want something. It's going to be a gift. It's going to be from Pharaoh coming from Hen and Nessu, and it's going to be um, triggered. The delay will be, we'll just say one, and he will give us, um, where is it? Probably scrolled right past it. Um, I actually see it in there. You know, he's going to give us game meat. Why not? And he's going to give us anywhere between 100 to 300 game meat. Now we have more events down here. You can see technically um, we can't select anything because this is a gift type event. So we're going to go back up here to our once here. And we're going to say on accept. Um, it's going to give us a gift from Pharaoh here. Okay. On refuse, nothing's going to happen. Or on lateness, nothing's going to happen. So let's do two more events here. We're going to say kingdom rating decreases. And it's going to be um, triggered. And it's going to say it's going to decrease by... This is our... We totally missed the thing. It's going to be by 10. That's pretty rough. Okay. And then we're going to do another one that's going to be our we we were late and it's only going to be five. OK, so let's go back up to our chickpea request here. We're going to say on refuse or on we didn't do it. It's going to be number two, which was our big one. And then number three, I wish we could rename these. Now, chained event is when this happens and this happens. So they it's chained together. They're going to happen together. They're chained together. OK, and then the event here is the gift. That's what we're going to get. Since we sent that, Pharaoh has honored us and given us a gift. And we're, we're going to go ahead and change this to um, doesn't actually give us the Devons one here. That's kind of interesting. Some I don't know why. Let's see. Maybe over here. Got to play around with a little bit more. OK, so we've gone through all of that here. We can see we have all this other stuff. So now in February, they're going to ask for between two to five hundred uh, chickpeas on accept. They're going to give us the gift on refuse. They're going to our kingdom rating will go down by 10. And if we're late to give it to them, it's only going to go down by five. And you could reuse these values. OK, just remember two and three and you can reuse them. So say now we're going to have a new event, which will be a troop request from a distant battle from Pharaoh and Hendonesu. There's going to be a battle up there. Now, reoccurrent. That means that this will happen multiple times over a set period of time randomly until all the times are used up and then it won't happen anymore, if that makes sense. So if you know you're, you've had multiple gold mines collapse or contaminated water collapse or something like that, there you go. So say 10. So between every 10 years starting, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, sometime in there, Pharaoh is going to request an army of, uh, let's say, 1 to 3. And then it's going to happen in June, okay? And they're just going to give us a time limit of 6 months. Now, this until means that it'll happen until this number reaches zero. So obviously zero means it's going to happen once and then it's going to go away. So if we said three times, okay, it's going to be up to 10 years. It's going to trigger, ask for an army or a naval battle. And then this number will decrease by two. And then it'll start again, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, year. Now say this time it triggered in year six. And then it's going to say... Oh, year six. Okay, then it's going to ask for an army. This number will go down again. 
And then it's going to, so it can happen anywhere between however numbers you specify here, between every 10 years, between every 20 years, et cetera. It's not on year 20, it's when, the, how often it'll happen. It's a random value. So we'll say between every six years, well, let's say, let's go back to 10. So that can technically give us up to a 30 year time frame. Um, Pharaoh will request armies. Okay. And on accept, he'll give us a gift. On refuse, our kingdom rate will decrease. On lateness, kingdom rate, on defeat, our kingdom rating will decrease just as bad. Okay. We can also add more events. We're just using this as an example. Another good one is um, contaminated water or gold mine collapse or clay pit flood. You know, if we have a clay pit flood, we're going to have recurrent every two years in September when the flood comes until it's down. Our, basically every other year, every year, um, a clay pit is going to flood. If that makes sense. It should. And you'll have a lot of these. If you're doing a proper long mission, you're going to have a lot of these. You can reuse them, but you're going to have a lot of these. Okay? So that's mission events. You have to play around with them. Remember, they're if, and, or statements. Okay? If this happens, this will happen. If this happened, this will also happen, and then these things will happen. Or they're also if, else statements. If, else, this will happen as well. That's literally all they are in programming. All right. Adjusting prices and imports. These are the goods that you have enabled. I do not recommend really changing these unless you know what you're doing. Um, unless you say, oh, I want wood to be really expensive and that's going to add to the issue with it. But if you don't really know exactly what you're doing, I recommend just leaving these alone to default values. And then gods here. Um, Kitty God is best god, so that's going to be our patron. Now I want to be able to build a temple complex to Bass, so we're going to go ahead and click that. I also want Osiris to be a local deity, and we're not going to make a temple complex and say raw. There we go. And that'll enable what gods we can build. Now that we have done our goods, we need to go back to our kingdom building here. So remember, we are at here in uh, Minat Khufu, our pharaohs in Henanesu. So this now you can see this is populated. It wasn't before. So I can say I want pharaoh to... You know, he's going to buy granite from me. He'll buy papyrus. He will sell plain stone, flax, and game meat. Why not? And it's a water trade route. And the open price is, you can see down here, we didn't set it. The open price was going to be 200. It's close by. Why not? And these here determine how much they'll buy, whether it's like 900, 1,005, or 2,005, I think, are the values. Don't quote me on that. But usually, medium is pretty good. Now, for Offer Oasis, obviously... They're going to export wood, because why not? Weapons as well, copper, and game meat. And they will buy flax gems, granite, linen, papyrus, plain stone. Why not? I'm just doing this as an example. And Sawu is a foreign city. They're not trading with us at all. They're just on the map. But we could have an event that Sawu would open. But you can set those yourself. All right. So now that we have done the difficult stuff, let's build the map itself. Since we are on the Nile River, I'm going to go ahead and, and do our Nile first. Now, I do recommend that if you're going to do your water, we have this brush tool up here. We're going to go ahead and pump this up to nine to do our water. And we're going to what we're going to plan on is having a nice big kind of open space on the left, a little island ish on the right and our Nile going down this way. So we're going to go ahead and kind of drag that like that. Do a little S with it. There we go. That's a nice S. So you can see here that we have no flat land to cross, really. We have a little here, a little here, and that's it for fishing as well. So we need to think about flat land. So if you want people to be able to fish, you want uh, warship wharfs, you have to add this stuff in or you can't, okay? So we'll have to unflatten or flatten some of our S curve here. That looks a little weird. Remember, anything that's like way too um, uh, man-made is going to look really weird. So natural juddings kind of... Um, Make it look good. OK, so there we go. That looks fine. We still got to add more stuff in. So we have, of course, our plane here, which is good more of as a deletion tool. Uh, cliffs, which if you've done the Valley of the Kings, you'll see those. Our road, which is we're going to do next. Floodplain, water, meadow, marshland, trees, sand dunes, ordinary rock and or barren rock, which is going to be gold and gems. So for our road, we're going to do our kingdom road here. We're going to let's say start here. We'll do it right here at the corner. We're going to shoot up like so. 
and go up that way. And then, you know what? We're just going to continue out that way. There we are. Gonna lag a little bit. So now that we have our road in, we need to do our entry and exit points. So since everybody's coming down from the north, we're going to go ahead and do our entry point right there and our exit point right there at the last tile. We're going to do the same for our water right up there at the top. You're going to click that side tile and we're going to do the same at the bottom. There we are. So they're going to sail in from the north and the people are going to come in from the north. Because everybody's coming down from uh, Mina Kufu. I forgot what I made. <laughs> One of those up there. All right. So now that we have our road, our kingdom road there, we could also do like little oasis. I recommend maybe turning it down a bit. But we could do like that, like that, you know. And I kind of like to uh, to mix these up a little bit with the grassland. So we can do, oh, let's select our grassland again. Our floodplain, we're going to select uh, just a little bit like that and kind of bring it over. Really extend that out a bit. Now it looks kind of cool. There we go. Well, not, well, that'd be floodplain. That was wrong. Let's undo that because that was wrong. We're going to do water. All right, there we go. That looks good. Okay. Next, we're going to go ahead and do our floodplains because we need to be able to farm. And I do recommend putting this on roughly about four to five. Remember that you have to account for how much your inundation is going to be. You build like these huge farmland, huge floodplains, unless you have perfect flooding, um, i.e. Osiris, you're, it's not going to really get it. So you've done some of those maps, but let's go ahead. We're going to kind of overwrite some of the land here so we don't have any gaps. Just bring that up. Remember, they won't be able to farm way up here. They won't see it, but we're going to bring that in like so. There we go. Mind you, we did make this flat land, so we're going to make some more flat land now. There's our nice little uh, farmland. Now, mind you, I don't want that to be so uh, straight or crooked like that. So I'm, these jagged parts that are jutting out, I'm going to get rid of those and kind of soften it up a bit. Now, mind you, these are only like one floodplain or one farm deep. So let's turn our grid on so we can see and zoom in. So you can see it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's roughly two, but you got to think of roads as well. So you want to keep those things in mind when you're doing this, okay? We'll bring that back a little bit more. I like this floodplain that kind of juts out. That's normal because wherever a river will elbow, it's going to be bigger and natural terrain. That's how that'll look. It's going to push in, so that'll be some good farmland. But you see we're getting kind of far away. We'll see our floodplains there. This is a perfect flood, not as much as it's going to be. This, this right here is probably a normal flood. All right. We have our crossing. You know what? Let's add some meadow land over here. Um, I don't recommend like going super heavy on it. What you want to kind of do is like do little paths of it. Um, you can also do like ones and kind of spread these out so they could get little individual farms there. And we can do a little bit more in there. So now we have some nice little meadow land over here. So we had some water over here in the edge. So there we go. It's nice and green. That's where that meadow land's coming from. And then let's say we'll do some marshland. How about that? We'll do marshland like that. Kind of S it around a bit. And just make this one a little bigger. Now I'm going to bring this down to one and put one right like that. Because we're going to put some uh, prey. So over here on the left, we have fishing. Which we'll go ahead and we'll put like four in. Why not? You can choose two or not two. Now, killer points or whatever your animal like uh, bad creatures would be. Obviously, I have mine turned off because until I feel that until I can control my army to get rid of them, I'm not going to use them. But if you wanted to put them in, it'd be like so. Uh, map prey is going to be so. And this map, since it's normal, will be antelope. We'll put one there. So they're going to be like in the middle of the marshland. We'll put one over here in the meadow. Kind of disrupt where they can build as well. Because remember, these are not buildable tiles. Uh, let's actually we're going to get rid of that with our planes tool. We'll put them over here by the oasis. That's a lot of hunting you can do. Not too bad, though. All right. So we have a few more tiles we haven't done yet. We have trees, um, which would, maybe we could do a little bit of trees over here. I don't know if we enabled log cutters or not, but if you did, this would be a good place for them. Or you just make people have to import wood if you need wood for ships and etc. Now, sand dunes are crossable by people, but not by roads and buildings. We also have ore bearing rock and rock. So I recommend with rock, 
that you start with a decent sized brush with regular rock and you build it in. Okay. Like if you were to do it like so, we can say this is why the road curved is because there's rock here. And then ore bearing rock, I recommend you bring down to like one or two and you very selectively splatter these in. So obviously ore will be gold and um, gems and stuff. And then you can also put some in the back to make it just show up on the map, but they can't mine that. There we go. And technically our map is ready. So we have everything in. We have all the stuff we need. Let's go ahead and save. So we're going to save. I have already did my little test over here. So we're going to go ahead and just overwrite that. And to load this in, it's pretty easy. We're just going to go to um, our custom missions. So we're going to load this in. We're going to select through. Go to game modes. Go to mission selection. We're going to go to custom missions and my maps. I'm going to test me here. As you can see, a village is tested. 2,500, five modest apartments. We're going to build our obelisk. We have a culture rating of 25, monument rating of 9, and a prosper rating of 20. Let's go ahead and hit play. All right, so we see here. Now, I have noticed this is a visual bug. As it gets closer to the actual inundation, this will turn to the dark brown red color, however you have it. So we go over here and we see we have our gods, Bast, Osiris, Ra, and of course we have our temple complex. We have the food that we selected, as you can see here. We have our water lift, but we didn't put in irrigation, so there's no point to a water lift. That's one of those things I was talking about clicking. We do have hunting lodges, fishing, our production, selling, porous granite, which is great, pyramids. We have our obelisk here. We have all of our entertainment and for beautification, there's not much and up here too as well. So once again, those things will be selected. You can see we have our uh, gazelles or antelope or whatever have you there or there. Our map. Here's our beautiful meadow land down in the south and our farmland up there, even though we can't or our marshland. So let's go ahead and take a look at the world map. You can see we have Hen and Nessu up here, which we can open our trade route. We can go ahead and do that. There we go the oasis and we have Sawu here, but we can't do anything with it. We have salty right here and they're not going to buy or sell anything because we forgot to set stuff for him and we forgot to set the price on that guy. Zero. Yes, please. Thank you. They love us so much. You can see down here in the bottom left hand corner, our map up here where our gold and everything is. Now we can set our granite mines, etc. Excellent. Let's unpause and see our event happen. They're going to ask for chickpeas. I think it is or figs. I forgot what we set should be in February. There it is. Sometimes it does this when you haven't like unloaded after you've saved it. But events, famine relief announcement, chickpeas. Remember, we set it between two and five, I believe. So it gave us three, which is kind of a median number. Three months to comply. Let's go ahead and unselect. No working dock. Oh, well, there's our water trade route coming in. And our traders here. Now let's pause that real quick and look at our ratings. We have a kingdom rating of 50. Two months, one month. All right, there we are. Relief overdue, sorry. As I know we don't have a dock. Now it should give us an additional three months. There's one, yep, there's two. So let's take a look here at our ratings. Here we're still at 50. All right, there we go. Oh, no, Mark, we are displeased. Your kingdom rating has fallen. So there we are at 40. So our kingdom rating went down by 10 because we did not send anything at all. We weren't late. We didn't do anything. Our kingdom rating went down. And you notice none of the other events played like the collapsing stuff for, because, well, one, we don't have any, but two, it's a random time frame within the year, within the however many years we set, I think it was 10. Also, the invasions and stuff like that. So there's our September. You can see our flood happened here. See how much it happened. And these are all things that I recommend you check out. Now, this dark water here, you want to make sure you have enough because the dark water is where they'll sail. And watch here. If you don't have enough, they won't sail through there. So that's cutting it a little close. 
So keep that in mind when you're doing your farmland. And like I said, this is a oh, excellent inundation. Fantastic. Let me see that up here. All right. So we have one more thing to look at, which is the press release, which is a very good infra infographic. And we're going to do briefly over that. And then we're going to go ahead and wrap up the video. And we're back. We got one last thing to look at. Now, this I will link below in the description. Uh, this has been released with the mission editor. It is the Pharaoh New Era mission editor guide. You can find this on their Steam page or I imagine on their website as well. I have it on Steam. So it does talk about designing. Um, just going through everything here, copper, gold, etc. kill points. These are like I covered now map names, taglines, etc. I do recommend that if you are going to be serious about doing this, you read this thoroughly. Now, here's that percentage I talked about. I think we picked Nubians, so 70, 30, Canites is 50, 50, stuff like that. Now, the more thing here is you want to look at these, uh, advanced settings going down here to look at entertainment culture rating and what's required and what's required to get it but more so also events. This will go over a lot of the information that I covered and a lot of it that I didn't cover as well, but frequency, events occurred, event gonna be. So we have like request events here, as you can see. Troop requests here, it breaks them all down. Invasion requests, water land problem, wages increase, decrease, gold mine, trade increase, et cetera, et cetera. Kingdom invasion. Now it also talks about here, for linking events, which this is really important, two possible outcomes, which that's again, that's our if or statement, um, three possible outcomes, if or or else, stuff like that. So I do recommend that you read over these. Now, a few tips here, starting small, which is what we did. I really highly recommend it. Build a map, test it out, see how it plays, you know, see how it looks. Um, talked about being prepared. You want to have a general plan for your mission. You want to think about things that you're going to do, how you want it to play out. What's the difficulty level? Do you want it to just be a fun uh, pyramid building mission? Do you want it to be a hard military mission? And remember that people actually want to play it as well if you're going to give it to your friends or publish it on the internet. And I'm going to probably push this mission um, that we developed here. I'll probably just put it on my Google page um, and link it down there to my Google documents so y'all can download it and take a look at what we did. Um, staying patient, you got to take time, play through it. They had more than 100 events to set up in dozens of trading cities. It wasn't done in a day. And it's meant to be played. Remember that. So if you're going to build these missions, that they're, they're meant to be played and they're meant to be completed. And people should either have a sense of accomplishment or have fun or whatever it is to get through it. If it's just negative the whole way, what's the point? So, all right, guys, I do appreciate y'all watching this video. Hopefully this cleared up a lot of information or questions that you had. If you have any more, go ahead and leave me some down in the comments um, and let me know what you think. I uh, might have to get on stream sometime and uh, develop submissions with uh, the viewers down there. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next time.